again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. It's actually Tammy Garthwaite, but... <laughs> it's a weird habit. It See, is. now you well, empathize and really, with my... I, 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 I hate to keep going round and round, but I'm annoyed because I do need... I, you should be able. You should have like a thirty day grace or a ninety day grace when you change your name to say, "Wait a minute, I screwed that up." Because it's not that I don't want. I I do want to be legally Tammy Garthway, but I should have made Simmons my middle name, and I didn't, and I don't know why. Like at the time, uh, because you're filling out right. a form, and you're like, "I don't need that. What do I think, What do I need that for?" And then now, just so many things, I'm like, ah, oh, that's going to be a nightmare. Do you oh, need that? Because I know uh, the filing period is opening up soon for yeah. for political yeah. office. And so um, you have to, like... I think I'll be able to be Tammy Simmons Garthway on the ballot because that'll be my nickname. Okay. Because I am known as Tammy but Simmons. But are you going to, like, do New Yard signs no. and stuff? Okay. Yeah. No. Although Dan and I are probably going to do some... Um, we have some... So, so I guess since filing period is opening uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, and then people have a week, or is it ten it's days? It's till next Friday, think, so yeah. it's from the first to the tenth. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then all next week. Uh, which means that anyone who wants to run for office on the state level or county, state or and county, county <laughs> uh, oh, federal. Sorry, <coughs> everything except for local government. See, that's so, what the federal government yeah. does to me. It just yep. chokes me the straight out. The federal races, so that you'll see the filings for everybody running for Congress and the Senate, which is really weird because I don't know how, I don't understand how the people running for Congress can file if nobody's so changed here's, at the district. So for folks back home who may not be up to speed, so basically every 10 years we gerrymander because that's what they're all doing. It just yeah, depends on who's right. in power. It's nothing when new. the Republicans are in power and they change things, it's gerrymandering. When the mm -hmm. Democrats are in power and Republicans complain, it's gerrymandering. Right. It's gerrymandering. It's, way, it's, it's literally the whoever's the beast. It's in charge. That's right. And let's not pretend otherwise. Right. So uh, this, the, the state legislature's ones, so the, the wards for the House have been set. Yes. But the Senate and the congressional districts are now being threatened to be vetoed by the state senate districts i think so i didn't look it up i'm ap i'm gonna apologize i did not maybe, look it up maybe, i looked up the house one because somebody said i thought they weren't so actually maybe the state no i think it's the state and the i know the the so, congressional well i have my paper here <laughs> maybe browse. i can discern so basically, in new hampshire we have two uh, u.s congress members cd1 and cd2 and the latest um, latest rendition that came out of, I believe, the legislature would move Manchester into CD2, among other things. Um, and I believe Sununu has said he'll veto or he's already vetoed. I can't keep up. And then now the courts are going to bet because somebody's got to make and, a decision. And so, like, who knows what's up? It's kind of like, so, so all of this, really, in my opinion, is just indicative of government being too big yeah too too involved because there's too, many too much power and mm. so there are all these interests going i gotta grab yeah. some of that and so we're seeing this just groundswell well it was funny because somebody called me somebody very much involved in politics called me the other day and asked me my opinion about if manchester was moved into cd2 from cd1 and you know did it bother me and i said well you know on the surface i don't really like it but i don't really know why i don't like it because it, i don't know i, I will say this from a Republican perspective, if moving Manchester into CD2 means we can get rid of Chris Pappas in CD1 and get a Demo or a Republican elected, I'll gladly take our city and go to CD2. However, what other all, another thing people don't know think about, you don't have to live in the congressional district to run in it. You can live in CD2 and run in CD1 anyways. So if you think about it, do, what does it really mean I, uh, and federal government's so broke that i'm like that's the least of my concerns now if the state senate seats haven't been finalized that's a pain in the butt because filing period starts tomorrow um so yeah, yeah so so it's the long and the short of it is it's kind of a mess yeah. because everything that they put their little grubby paws on yep. becomes a mess but if you are just running for the house you can sign up yeah, if you're running for the house um, if you're gonna run um if you're running for, there's like county county sheriff and county, um, like the treasurer. I, I would love to see more Liberty people run for sheriff. Like that um, feels like well, it could be such a, a, a. I think uh, there's a miss. 
<clears throat> interpretation of what the sheriff in New in New Hampshire does. They're not really law enforcement in the sense like a police officer. They serve. They, no, they, they have they some magic powers people. like the right to deputize people. Right, but they, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? They only, they transport prisoners. They they run the, the it, it's strange. So when people move here from other states, they think, oh, the sheriff, you know, sheriff's in town. Um, and it's different. It's, just, it's weird. It's a weird thing. It'll be interesting. Um, it'll be interesting because they're here in Manchester. So. The biggest dis changes are in the floater rails. Um, I did want to count real quickly. Um, bear with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, <laughs> 18, 19, 20, This is 21. riveting TV, know, guys. 23, Come on. 25, 27, <laughs> Do 29. Do not change the channel. 30, Tammy's 31, counting. 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, uh, I'll count again in a minute. So but we're so, gonna get 31 so in this new plan. We get Manchester gets 31, and I think we're at 33 because we were at 35, and then we went to 33. And the reason we ha would have less representation than is not that people are moving out of Manchester because obviously people aren't moving out of Manchester, but that other communities grew faster. So we may have lost, you know, another rep to Hooksit or whatever, you know, like they they have they have to spread it out. Um, the biggest changes are in the floaterials. Every ward will still have every individual ward will still have two state reps of their own. And I hate the floaterials because I think people are confused. I think it confuses voters. I think it's hard for candidates because you have to it's, pick it's, where to I run. Mean, I actually considered. I, yeah. I looked at the floaterial yep. and I was like, so. Basically, for me, what yep. happened was my district as a Senate candidate in District 20 was uh, Manchester, Wards 3, 4, 10, and 11, yep. and then it was Gosh all town. of Goffstown. When they re when they Redi changed, the, when they gerrymandered the district, someone wanted someone who was on the election commission wanted a safe seat. Mm -hmm. And so somehow Goffstown got given to Hooksit, which mm -hmm. makes it a probably, you know, uh, a well, Republican plus for right. sure. It's, the district. story is, is that Kevin Kavanaugh's not gonna even run. So it's a, it's, it's, like it's, a, a it's a shoe in, right? right? So I finally won Goffstown in 2020 oh, no, and, and that got not. taken <laughs> away. So now I'm looking at the Senate landscape and I was like, uh, well, I mean, there's ridiculous, well, but I think I can do it. And then there's just, no, this is impossible. The, right. And it, then I looked at the floats and I'm right. like, well, it's the floaterial the for the House is almost the same district as the Senate. So now you've got to go and do as much work for the House, I mean, I did, where it's it's hard to it, cover six polling stations. Yeah, so the it's, floaterials now will be, um, I'm going to grab this because I'm going to screw it up. The floaterials will have two seats that cover wards six, eight, and nine. And that floaterial basically used to be eight, nine in Litchfield. So now Ward 6 has got moved over into that and Litchfield moved over to somebody else. It does else. seem like the floaterials became more city. Well, they are. Not. They're all contained yeah. within the city. Yeah. So there's that. But then um, we used to have a floaterial that was just West Manchester. We used to have three seats, I think. Now we have... It's like 10, oh, 11, This is not even written three, right. 10, 10, 11, 10, 11, 12. So okay. West Manchester downtown ward three and north end ward one yeah and i'm like that's a big <laughs> that's five wards and they get four seats okay so that'll be so that'll be four people who can run for the floaterial so actually yeah. if you're someone who's if you who live wants in ward, to get yeah. like your feet wet and maybe yeah. you're not i mean i, I and then I, they've I, got ward two four five and seven together so that's a really democrat ward um which would get three seats. So it used to be one and two. Now I can't even remember. It used to be one, two, and three were together. Four, five, six, seven were together. Eight, nine, Litchfield. And then the west side. So they've shifted that around. So it'll be interesting to see who signs up where. Um, what I, the good news from my perspective that I have heard is that there are some Democrats that aren't running. Um, there's quite a few, not, I wouldn't say quite a few, there was an article in the paper the other day about, you know, how many House members aren't running. Either either people are running for the Senate. There's some really good state reps that are 
taking on Senate races, which would be awesome. I saw Timothy Lang. Tim Lang, he's one of my favorites. Michael Yakubovich from Hooks is taking on that seat. Others, I'm not, I'm Howard Pearl. I'm not meaning to discount anybody. I just know there was yeah. a list. And then there were reps that just weren't returning. Some of them, unfortunately, were very good reps. And for a variety of reasons, I think it's just hard sometimes with their families. Yeah, um, and, or they've done it for six years or yep, eight years, yep. and they're ready to retire, uh, I, and they want a different quality the, of life. I mean, I you know, people forget that I don't think it's, like, super fun. This well, is I like mean, service, you got to enjoy. Right? you got to be, you know, you can't have, you got to have some thick skin, I think. You know, so you know, um, I mean, I know some people. I, I'll say this: I know at least one rep who isn't running again, who does take it all very personal. Like it takes too much emotion, in my opinion, and it is hard. Um, but if you're somebody who you know takes it on the chin like hard every time, you know this is not an easy game. That's why I have such this a, is a full square con- face, yeah. guys. This is a full I take contact it on the sport. chin like um, once a day. Now the rumor mill, <laughs> whether it's true or not says that in Manchester, um, I heard that Mary Heath was not running, which is in Ward 7, which will make a wonderful change there. I uh, I know Mark Warden on the Republican side is not running. That's a sad day. Um, Agreed. I've heard Tim Smith isn't running in Ward 10. Don't know if that's true or not. I guess we'll know in the next 10 days. Um was it Willis Griffith? I always get two of them confused. Not Willis Griffith, the other one. Matt well, Wilhelm. I think I heard Matt Wilhelm wasn't running. Um, so it'll be interesting. We ha- So basically, I mean, I think the long and the short of it is it seems like there's a, there's going to be a shakeup all round. We know that every 10 years the districts change. That influences how things work. Of course, things like the economy, inflation, gas prices, undeclared wars, you know, all the shenanigans that are in play at the moment are going to influence what happens. Yep. I've seen reports, actually, and this was a, a federal article, but basically where people were saying, I mean, there's just no way in hell a lot of Democrats who would have run aren't going to run because they know they're, they're just going to well, get I mean, their their uh, their butts handed to them because, I mean, it's undeniable that things are well, not you know, going I, well. I tried to think of, like, what was the most egregious things that people voted on in in Concord this year and up, or in the last two years or in – and I couldn't really come up with one – a bill off the top of my head without – you know, like there are many in things that everybody, all the Democrats in Manchester vote for. Like, I'm gonna. That's. I was reading a thing. I, I wanted to say article. I was reading a blog the other day, and it was talking about you know if you're running against an incumbent, you have to get them fired. Not only do you have to get yourself elected, you have to give a reason to people to fire them, right. which should be easy enough because these well, people you, don't want to do anything that provides you but with you would more think opportunity. It is easy, but the thing is, is uh, people don't really know that much about their candidates, sadly. I, I mean, I look at someone like Lou D'Alessandro, right? He's been in the Senate yep. now for 24 yep. years. He serves in a Catholic district, yep. and he votes for abortion. Yep. And I'm like, why are people in the district for whom that is an important issue supporting him? Yep. And I'm like, uh, based on when I talk to people, they're like, oh, I didn't know that. Well, because if you read Lou's mailers, they're very misleading. That's oh, one thing. Well, yeah. So, I mean, that um, goes without saying. So I but- did pull up one bill that matters to me. And also explain this to yes. me. So if you're a Democrat and your entire platform, I mean, maybe this is the more progressive side of them, but it's all about hating on like the old white yep. males. Yep. Uh, they might throw in a cis heteronormative, yep. whatever the uh, wording is, right. right? But then you go look at these old fogies on the yep. Democrat side oh, yeah. who are just like solid shoe-ins. And I'm like, so can you not think are you being misled over here? Well, I think the voters... Why is this happening? Voters, um, I have a couple theories. I think voters don't know how people vote. Like, they don't know what their legislators... So it is our job as those running against these people to point out how her, how poorly those people are voting and the things that they are voting on. And that's what I'm going to do this year. But they also vote um, lockstep. They do. Well, I, You know, if you look at the XY yep. uh, things of Republicans versus Democrats, yep. I mean, Democrats now just solidly vote as a block. Like, there's no individualism. There's no room for pro, pro-life pro Democrats. Yep. Can you be a pro-life Democrat anymore? Well, not in 
get along with anybody in your party, I don't think. I mean, what would happen to you if you voted? Like, like I, I mean, I mean that generally. I don't know. Because I'm just kind of like, you know, when I look at the data, because it's important to actually deal with facts and not just your random Monday, Tuesday mm. morning feelings, um, you can clearly see the Democrats now in New Hampshire as well. They vote lockstep. Yep. And that is what makes you a democratic socialist. Yep. Because that means you're, you're not, not even thinking, thinking for, yourself. for yourself or representing your constituents who, if you serve in New Hampshire, would be both pro-life and pro-choice. So right? here in Manchester, we all can agree, whether you want to believe it or not, that our education system is woefully broken because our our proficiency scores are ridiculously low, ridiculously low. They were ridiculously low before COVID. So when anybody tries to say it was just COVID that caused these numbers, that's simply not it true. It wasn't they were, COVID. It is the government's response it, to COVID. It, well, it was broken. We had terrible scores before COVID. Right, but and just then we, everyone stop saying something is the result of COVID. So it's not. We continue to have terrible proficiency scores. Whenever you see an article that says our scores have improved dramatically, that's because they've gone from abysmal to just slightly less abysmal. <laughs> so in New in Manchester, like 1,200 students left the district, which I can't blame parents for pulling their kids out of the out of a district that is just on paper failing. So um, I'm a strong proponent of children the Children's Scholarship Fund, which would um, the tax credits um, to provide scholarships so that students can go to other schools other than the one assigned to them by their choice, zip codes right and then the education freedom account which is a separate thing which says we're going to take that state dollars and give it to the student to go to where you know the criteria they can't just go willy-nilly there is there is oversight um but it gives parents an opportunity to be able to make choices so that it isn't just the people from the wealthier wards in our city that have the opportunity to choose for their <laughs> all children all these people who are like oh we hate school choice right, all, but we send our right. kids to private well, school I mean, you know the reality is is more affluent people have school choice have had school choice all along because if you're don't if you do not like the the public school that you're assigned to you can one move to a different place which a lot of people that on the lower economic scale don't have the ability to do or you can pluck your kid out of the public school and send them to a private school and be able to afford to double pay because you're paying for the tuition and you're paying for the property taxes now, with the education freedom accounts, we're saying families that make up to, I think it's three times the, the poverty level, so a family of four making maybe 80 grand a year, which is nothing, now can take those state funds and maybe they can also get an education for a uh, scholarship and maybe they can find a private school that'll help you know with their tuition and they can get those kids that deserve i mean there are kids that are bullied there are kids that just don't work well in the public school system they need a different type of learning and lockstep every democrat that bothered to vote on, well because wow. nicole klein knight didn't vote and amy bradley did not vote Every other Democrat in the city of Manchester that is an elected state rep voted to repeal these that, opportunities for our children. So How can you? I, I, I just I have a hard time finding something that's really more egregious than not wanting to help children. Because, again, here's the thing. You're not saying anything about the schools. You are providing choice opportunity to the children and to the parents of the children to do what fits them in order to actually have an education because here's another thing you know we we gloss over these literacy rates but here's the point if you can't if, you can't if read, you're, you're illiterate not gonna do anything. then democracy doesn't work and let me repeat that if yeah. you can't read so you can't think so you can't comprehend then we cannot have democracy because then we have mob rule if you yep. don't know what's cutting and you trust these powers that be who are the people who literally walk around yep. and go, we think we should confiscate your guns while being surrounded with by... people being protected with firearms. Yes. Because they're they're more special. Because than they're you. more special than you are. And 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 I mean, if we can't see through the hypocrisy mm -hmm. at this stage, and if we don't start to write this direction. I think we're in for really yep. big 
trouble. But I'm also an optimist. So my happy news yep. was I followed a car here whose license I plate this. was I sparkle. Right? And I How was fun like, is that? Just it makes you feel good. There's like, yay, somebody's happy in life. Yeah, um, I, I, I think that's that's. I did want to mention that I did look online t at the city website to see if I could pull up the fiscal 23 budget that was passed now two weeks ago, and yep, Let still not guess. available. Don't don't not don't. there. Um, so maybe another week. Uh -huh. Um, I wanted to remind people that this coming this Saturday, is a budget that they've actually voted they, on they that the it two city weeks is ago. supposed to actually be, but we still don't we, know. We can't. We don't actually get to see it. What's in um, it? Plant sale at the Manchester Animal Shelter this Saturday and Sunday. Great place to get plants for I'm your yard. Back. Great way to support the animal shelter. Um, I also thought, so you're, you've got a plot in the community garden, don't you? So I don't have a plot. So here's what I did. There's this wonderful guy called Nick Pigeon. Mm -hmm. He lives on the yep. west side. Um, he started... Uh, the raised beds yeah. on the west side and he kind of manages that so you can rent beds from them i think it's 15 dollars for it's this cheap. season it's cheap money so i'm working with a lady out in goffstown because i want to learn to farm and also i just want to you know I do, uh, learn some new skills why not <laughs> right um and you know maybe growing food right, might become right? a little more important in the future because we're not going to be able to afford our own groceries so you know i'm just trying to mitigate so she had extra plants, yep. and so I let Nick know, and he had mentioned that uh, folks from the Latino community had rented a bunch of them. So it became this like, like nice, like nice, just, like full circle. So I got extra tomato plants and tomatilla plants yep. and um, leeks and onions, yep. and there was something else I forget now, and you know, like three or four yeah, trays. Yeah, I saw a picture quite a bit. And then and then Nick came and picked them up, and he's giving them to them. Nice. And so nice. you know. I, I, it felt really good. And the same day, actually, my husband, Louis, came home and he's working on the We Heart West yes. stuff. So We Heart West is a, I don't even know if it's an official nonprofit. It is a but nonprofit. It's a, it's, a, it's a sort of community driven thing. like a 501 something something. I don't understand. That uh, <laughs> is interested in beautification of the West Side, making sure our trails are, are, are not, not doing the trail trail work. There are right. lots of orgs that clean do that. Thank and things you. Like but that. we do cleanups, trash pickups decorations like nice just nice stuff right. like we all want to live in a nice things. sparkle <laughs> so i got home and nick picked these things up in the next minute louie and mari came in and they had all the last yeah. seed packets so if you're watching this and you received a packet in the mail from we heart west with wildflower yep. seeds that are supposed to be really good for yep. the uh, for the environment for here the in New Hampshire. So it's supposed to, yes, it's helping the bees, it's helping the birds, it's helping the insects, it's helping hummingbirds and p yep. dragonflies and the whole thing, right? So the idea, because someone did ask me, they were like, what am I supposed to do with this? And it's like either scatter it in a part of your garden yep. or go just scatter it. Yep. You know, like Along if you're on the roadside trail or something. Or, right. You know, whatever. So we have we have some extra packets. And I was like, I'm just going to throw yep. them out while I'm hiking. Yep. Why not? Maybe something comes up and you're like, wow, I planted that <laughs> corn flower or right, whatever right? it is. <laughs> but if you live on the west side, um, watch your mail because they, they, they started going out in the mail this, I think. Yep. And, um, it was like 4,800 households or some crazy number. So yay for We Heart West. Um, but you, one, if you do plan them, you can, I think there's a map. You can go to We Heart West. West and fill and it fill in. fill it in so that they can see where they were planted and then they can kind of track if they, you know. If, if, yeah. I'm going to plant some up near my, we have this one weird sp spot between yeah, our like, house and our know, neighbors. Exactly. Like maybe there is just this one little thing and it's, it's a little bit of an effort, but actually that is part of that feedback yep. loop, right? So you're like, oh, I did something randomly good yep. for no other reason Just than like I good. did it or because someone made it easy for yep. me because this came in the mail and all I have to do is go shake it out somewhere or so whatever, see, right? We, right, and, and, and if you believe that the government is too involved in too many things and too big and gets involved in too many things, this is a good example of where people Yes. Just people can do things. We can pick up the trash in our own neighborhood. You don't have to get, wait for We Heart West <laughs> to tell you to do it. You can go out and when you see, you know, the Dunkin' Donuts cup in a McDonald's bag and oh, whatever in front of your house, just pick it up and throw it in the trash. 
Let's help. Let's make our community better. Well, and you know, and I think it's part of it's it's endemic of the society we want. So if you are just always going to wait for someone else, yeah. someone else needs to pick up the trash, or someone else is going to do this. Know this: someone else. If you utter those words, the someone else is you. Yes. Like you have to. Uh, th there is a, th be your own hero yep. and your own story. Yep. Figure it out and go out there and be your best self. Stop sort of going. The government is gonna something. Oh, so They're not. Do it yourself. If you if you live in Manchester, because that's what we're talking about. Um, I do believe uh, weekly. Yardways picked up probably switched to bi-weekly because I put stuff out on fr last week and it didn't get picked up so I was like oops I think because I know at some point it stops becoming weekly until the fall again so you might uh, you might want to check the city's website maybe they've got that information out there for you um <laughs> as to whether or not your your yardways will get picked up mine I'm gonna wait and see if mine gets picked up on Friday because they didn't pick it up last weekend and they don't think it had anything to do with the holiday I but could, I yeah, could be wrong the, but um, sometimes the things shift when so it's a long So if you know weekend. about um, some good community involvement activities here in Manchester or something you'd like Carla and I to talk about or you want to just send us hate mail or whatever <laughs> it is, um, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Uh, Carla does a great job of uploading these videos to YouTube and Odyssey, they go to Odyssey automatically, I think. I don't know. Um, and... Check out Carla's book. Yes, we haven't said that in a long time. Check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, yep. Stories of Hope, mostly. You can buy it on Amazon and on my website, carlagarrick.com. There you go. And next week we'll... Oh, I'm not allowed to say oh. that part. Um, <laughs> next week Sorry. we will... Um, Thank you. ...update you as to where we're at with people who've already filed. Um, there'll still be a few days left at that point, but it'll be interesting to see it, um, who who signs up. It's always fun. For us political geeks, it's fun. Um, that's how we got it's fun this for her. Thing. I'm enjoy, like, ah. Enjoy the weather. It uh, might get some rain and stuff, but it's been gorgeous. This is great. If this is how our summer is going to go, I'm happy. That's all right, all guys. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.